All right. Hello, dear friend. Pastor John here. How are you doing? Um, welcome to the Christian Basics series. And um, we're going to be looking at the fundamentals of the Christian faith. And um, the series has been written for you. And it doesn't matter if you've been a you know, believer for a long time or you're seeking out Christianity, right? Whatever it is, that's fine. Um, the purpose is to understand who Jesus Christ is and why he came, right? So who is Jesus Christ? Jesus is God in the flesh, right? And he came to die for us. Uh, to atone for our sins so that when we place our faith in him with a humble, repentant, and obedient heart, uh, we have eternal life in him. That's basically it. And as such, we're sealed and saved eternally through the person of the Holy Spirit. So um, this series is made up of different parts. Um, so... There are different doctrines, that is teachings that are there to help you uh, get an overview of the, um, the essentials of the Christian faith. And also there's a, um, um, goes hand in hand with articles that I created for you. Um, they're all there. Um, there's in the, in the video description, there's links. You can link to the articles to read about all of it more in depth. And um, so to see how it all fits together, one of the things, uh, the, one of the goals, or the goal really is, is to get you into the Bible and to understand and learn and grow in God's Word, right? That's why God gave us His Word, the Bible. So that's pretty much it as a summary, right? To look at these f uh, foundational doctrines and also, of course, to understand why um, Jesus Christ, why Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven, right? We, we consider John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father but through me. And he also says, Jesus says in John 15, 5, apart from me, you can do nothing. So taking together those two, we have... Um, Absolute truth that can be found only uh, in and through uh, Jesus Christ. Um, so we're going to look at more detail um, and how that all fits together. And um, so basically, um, I'm going to give you a little overview of the the different parts we'll be covering. Yeah, the doctrines, right? You can also call them teachings. Um, is the uh, doctrine of the Bible. Right, that's God's word. Uh, then we have the doctrine of God coming up, and the doctrine of the creation, the creation account. Um, then there's the fall, unfortunately, but the Bible tells us about the fall, the fall of mankind. And um, then there's the doctrine of Christ, Jesus Christ, the Lord. Um, we call it Christology. Um, you know, I'll try to. The, not you know here and there uh, we'll use some theological terms as much as needed but as less as can do right not to not because you're not able to understand it but just because there's many things the bible clearly reveals to us where we don't need um a lot of um you know specific theological terms and, and just because something is you know calls itself theological means it is uh, necessarily uh, the best way to um, to um, approach the Bible and, and learn about our Lord Jesus Christ. So that's just on a side note, right? So, so that's Christology, is Jesus Christ. Then there's the doctrines. Um, I put it, uh, we put it in one piece on sin and salvation. Um, we'll look at a little more about that. Then there's the uh, doctrine of the Holy Spirit. Uh, yeah, we want to find out why do we call him holy, the Holy Spirit, and who he is. Uh, so there's a lot more, it's a bit more detailed there for you. Then there's the doctrine of the church, ecclesiology. Yeah, we're going to look at that. 
And then the last part is the doctrine of the last things, um, eschatology. That's the end times. So um, we're going to give look at a little overview of the um, of the individual parts, and we're going to start off um, with the um, Bible. And again, this is just a brief summary, right? What's going on here? And you have much more. There's uh, several more messages coming, uh, God willing, and in this Christian Basics series where we take a closer look at, um, at every, each and every one of these um, uh, doctrines, teachings, and understand um, why they are so important. So um, the summary here now is we have the doctrine of the Bible, right? The Bi doctrine of the Bible. Um, sometimes called bibliology. We'll look a little bit at that. Um, the Bible is really, it's the story of the gospel. Um, the gospel is um, God's message and promise of salvation that's freely available to every believer in Jesus Christ. So I'll repeat that. The gospel is God's message and promise of salvation that is freely available to every believer in Jesus Christ. So in the Bible, we learn more about um, the, um, the work of the Holy Spirit and um, how the Bible came together. Like it's, that is really astonishing. And um, we're gonna look at the two parts, the, the Old Testament and the New Testament. That's how God has revealed himself in his word. And um, it is the Bible is also the only uh, text or document, if you want, that tells us about the incarnation of um, uh, Jesus Christ. Incarnation just means that uh, Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit. So, um, yeah, get ready for that. That's going to be we're going to cover that in much more depth and understand, see why that why that is important. And um, so we're going to look at Jesus Christ um, just as he's revealed in the Bible and also um, understand that the gospel is also about um, Jesus overcoming and defeating um, sin, right? Sin, Satan, that's the devil, evil and death, right? So... That's the gospel in a nutshell. And uh, as I said, it's revealed in the big story of the Bible. Uh, we've got um, 39 books in the Old Testament. And we've got um, 27 books, books we call it texts, right, in the New Testament. So 39 plus 27 is 66 books. And that we'll be looking at in the doctrine of the Bible. Uh, next up, uh, the, the second part is the doctrine of God, and um, sometimes called um, theology proper, and we're going to look at the reason why that is called that, and uh, to help us understand um, that God is the creator of everything that exists. Um, we'll learn more about um, um, why God created what he created, right? Everything God created, everything that exists, and also more about um, what the Bible tells us about his attributes. Um, that is also God's nature and his works. Um, one thing here is that uh, God is perfect, he's holy, he's eternal, and uh, infinite and unchanging. And so we're going to look at that and also why it matters that um, um, he created mankind, right? He had a reason for that. And we're going to look at that. And uh, that's a really exciting and um, um, very, um, it's a vast doctrine. So we're going to look at the main parts. Uh, that will help you grow and learn and understand more as they are revealed in the Bible. The Bible, we also call the Bible scripture. Um, but, you know, you can use them either way. Call it God's word. That's also okay. And, um, yeah, we're going to look at the Trinity. 
more. That is uh, what that means. Um, we have the triune God. That is three in one, but one God. So, but he's three different persons, three individual persons that coexist. Um, but it's still they make up the um, the Trinity. That is the what we call the Godhead. So don't be don't be alarmed of all these terms and words. We'll we'll look at that, see what the Bible has to tell us, and uh, explain to us uh, how that all fits together. And um, also understanding that God um, has a um, has a has a will, right? God is a person too, but he's he's got. Uh, personal attributes but he's also divine so he he's different uh, than us uh, human beings and um, well God is God and we are we right God is God and people are people so we're going to be looking at that too that distinction but also at shared um, characteristics and attributes right that's going to be the the um, the doctrine of God and there's the doctrine of creation, that is um, how God um, brings everything into existence. Uh, God speaks, he, he speaks the universe into existence. And uh, also along with making mankind. So that's where we're going to be looking at the uh, book of Genesis, right? the first book in the, in the Bible, in the Old Testament. And, and also see why uh, God made mankind right so why did he do that right and um, we'll learn more about adam and eve our first human ancestors right there uh, the bible tells us we're made in the image of god we will find out more what that means uh, what does it mean to be made in the image of god and um, also that um, adam and eve are real people the Garden of Eden is a real place, as the Bible reveals to us. And uh, they're not symbolic or um, some idea or something. No, they're real people, um, a man and a woman, Adam and Eve. And um, the, um, the events recorded in Genesis are real, actually truthful events. So we're going to look at that too, a little bit more detail there and um, also helping us understand um, um, uh, what happened there in, in, the, in the Garden of Eden. That's where the doctrine of the fall comes. That's next. That's um, where we have the uh, fall of mankind, also called the fall or the, the teaching, the doctrine of fall. And that's basically where... Um, uh, Adam and Eve, they were tempted by an angelic creature, um, Satan, the devil, right? Um, who had rebelled against God. And um, his goal was to tempt Adam and Eve to disobey God and sin against him. And so we're going to look at the outcome of all of that, right? The, the, the fall of mankind and also how God... Um, uh, even though he renders judgment, right? He he expels Adam and Eve from the Garden of Eden. He um, he already puts in place his plan of redemption. In other words, uh, reconciling us back to himself because of our broken sin state. And um, yeah, so we're going to look at some of the outcomes, uh, the results uh, of the fall of mankind, and. Um, so and also where um, uh, who right how how does how does everything relate together? God, human beings, Satan, the devil, a real uh, uh, being and a fallen angelic being, also called also a, a demon. You can call him a demon, and he's uh, he's the boss, so to say, over the demons. So we're going to look at that. So these are all. Uh, very important things to for us to look at and um, then of course the doctrine of uh, Christ Jesus Christ uh, we call this Christology Jesus Christ the Lord 
we'll, we'll look at why we call Jesus the Lord, what the Bible tells us about that. And um, we're going to be looking specifically at the, um, uh, the person of Jesus Christ and his work, right? So why did Jesus come? I, I already mentioned it. Uh, to atone uh, for our sins and also um, who he is as God in the flesh. So simultaneously God and but also human being. How can that be? How does that all work together? So we're going to look at Jesus' uh, deity, right? His divine uh, uh, nature and being, his humanity, and how it is all unified Right, two parts, and also the um, the virgin birth. So, um, how can that be? How can a person be born of a virgin, right, without um, uh, human participation in that sense, as we usually go about it? So that's a very, very big thing. Um, and um, we're also going to explore the question: Why did Jesus come? And why did Christ have to die? Right? Jesus, we sometimes call him uh, Jesus Christ or Christ or Christ Jesus. Later in the New Testament, he's referred to as Christ Jesus. Why did Christ have to die? And uh, what can we learn about the cause and nature of the atonement? So this is very, very important to understand because this is the at this point, um, we learn more about the uniqueness, uh, the absolutely unique difference between Christianity and all other beliefs and faith. And uh, that leads us to the um, resurrection of Jesus Christ. Jesus was resurrected from the dead after his death, and we're going to take a closer look at that. And um, that is really, that is really the, um, the key difference between Christianity and all other um, religions and or, or faiths or man-made belief systems, whatever you want to call them, and also his ascension into heaven. Why did Jesus ascend into heaven in bodily form? So um, all of this is important for understanding of Jesus Christ in order that we can um, embrace who he is, what he did, and to come to saving faith. In other words, to surrender to him with repentant hearts um, in and through him and uh, receive eternal salvation. So we're going to be looking at that and um, also see how the Old Testament already, uh, so the time before Jesus was born and came on the scene, uh, how it already points to him and um, also what how um, his life, he himself, points to himself, and the rest of the New Testament points to Christ as well, to Jesus Christ. So we're going to take a very close look at that. So that's a big one. Um, then we've got the doctrine of sin and salvation. Um, those are two um, separate doctrines, but uh, put, it, put it together um, into one um, because they're closely t uh, connected. And the, um, the doctrine of sin um, is called harmartiology. Harmartiology is the, um, the study of sin, basically. And um, the doctrine of salvation is called soteriology. We'll look at all these, um, just briefly where those words came from and how they are connected and why it is important for us to understand today, uh, you know, what sin is, um, the nature of sin, and how it, how it affects us um, as people, in, in, as human beings, right? And um, where, the, um, um, where the enemy, the devil, uh, walks in and through people's hearts and lives um, to, um, um, to um, let them be unaware that they are actually living or participating in sin, for example. So we're going to very practical here. And um, so only once we grasp the nature of sin can we understand and embrace um, the, the free salvation, as already mentioned, that God has provided through us um, 
through in, in our personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Yes, we can have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And we'll look a bit about more about that. So in the doctrine of sin and salvation. So moving from there, we're going to be looking at um, pneumatology. Pneumatology is the doctrine of the Holy Spirit. And um, it is very important to understand uh, the nature and work and who the Holy Spirit actually is as the um, third part, the third person of the Trinity. And um, um, it, we could have looked, we, we could look at it in the doctrine of uh, God as well because it all, it's interconnected, but it's worthwhile exploring it in a, um, uh, in a specific, uh, more detailed way. Uh, again, we ask here, how can God be three, three individual persons yet one God, right? So that's what we're going to be looking at. And we're also going to see how the Holy Spirit works uh, in and through the lives of people in the Bible, in the Old Testament, and in the New Testament, and for us today in our lives. So that's an opportunity to understand um, who the Holy Spirit is. We're going to, you know, the Holy Spirit, we're going to understand uh, what He is not, right? He's not a ghost or some kind of an energy force or something like that. So we're also going to look at, you know, some common misperceptions and then move on to uh, who he who he is and especially what he does, what his work is and how he can help us. And uh, yeah, we're moving then to um, the doctrine of the church. Um, the doctrine of the church is often, or we call it ecclesiology, right? Or, or the study of the church. And we want to understand the nature and purpose of the church. So, so what does the Bible tell us about the early church? Uh, how it was unified, what was the government and purpose, and um, how all of that uh, applies to us today. Uh, here's a hint. Church is not a building. It is not a, a concrete br brick and mortar building. Um, the church is people. The people, the church's people, um, you and me, as members of the body of Christ, and uh, so made up of individual parts, and uh, so we're going to look at that, look at some Bible verses too to help us understand. Again, that it's not a beautiful building, not to say that there are some beautiful uh, church buildings. That is true, but that's not what church is, right? Biblically speaking. So that's what that's one thing we're going to explore, and also the um, the importance of the two main uh, sacraments, uh, baptism and the Lord's Supper. And um, again, what baptism is, what it's not, what the Lord's Supper is, what it is not, and uh, just to see how that all fits together. Um, and to help us understand uh, what the Bible reveals to us and um, the, um, the work of our Lord Jesus Christ, of course, comes into play here. So other aspects, of course, of the church are fulfilling the Great Commission, right? You may have heard of the Great Commission. We're going to look at that too in more detail. And also evangelizing and missional uh, as believers, as Christians, were uh, called to mission and to fulfill the Great Commission. And we'll look at, uh, at that in the uh, doctrine of the church. And then last, last is the doctrine of the last things. It's called eschatology. We'll look at the meaning, uh, the reason it's called that. And um, here we have uh, several parts that we want to consider, which are essential to understand. That is the return of Christ. That is the second coming also called the parousia, and uh, the millennium, right? As you may have heard of, heard of the thousand years, um, what are the different positions there? And then, very important, and, and I encourage you to pay very close attention here, uh, the, what the Bible tells us about the final judgment, um, eternal punishment, death and the intermediate state, what do we mean by the intermediate state? 
And then again, as already mentioned, um, the importance of the resurrection as part of the the doctrine here. And uh, what do we what can we learn from the Bible um, about the new heavens and the new earth? Right. That's the it's, it's called the new heavens and new earth. Right. The new Eden. So. That's very important. So here we'll learn all about heaven and hell. Yes, heaven is real. Yes, hell is real. And so um, our focus is here not to, you know, go into things we're not supposed to do, like fortune telling or predicting the future. The Bible tells us, warns us against that. That's violating God's word. We don't do that. But actually what the Bible does tell us, right? So there's some very stern and firm truths here. Um um, which we have to understand. And uh, the Bible tells us, doesn't tell us everything about heaven and hell, but it tells us enough. And it's more than sufficient to understand uh, the importance um, of um, the work of our Lord Jesus Christ and why um, it's important to not just consider him, but actually turn to him in repentance and with a repentant, surrendered, humble heart and grow in our personal relationship. So how does our relationship with Jesus Christ fit into all of this, the end times? So that's it. That's the overview, right? I hope you're uh, yeah, just as excited as I am. And um, there's a lot of ground to cover. And so um, uh, we'll just end with prayer briefly here. So, Lord Jesus, we just want to thank you for this blessed day and uh, just get an overview here of your word, the Bible, and all the different teachings, the doctrines it has for us, and to guide us and lead us into your word and um, to, to turn to our Lord Jesus in repentance, with surrendered, repented humble and obedient hearts and um, that's all you're after really lord jesus is hearts bent towards you you're not really uh, that much concerned about um, you know how successful we are or famous or rich or poor or uh, that's not that's you after our hearts so i pray that we um, return to you surrendered repented humble obedient hearts and that you bless us. And may you bless us here in this uh, Bible Basics series, Christian Bible Basics. And come alongside us and help us learn and grow uh, in your word. We thank you, Lord Jesus, and love you and praise you. In your holy name we pray. Amen. And always remember, the best Bible is an open Bible. So please join us again soon. Amen.